few months ago, Father Gerald Murray, you may have seen him on EWTN, said that the outcome of the Synod is going to be a delusional make-believe religion. And it absolutely feels like that's what we are living through in 2023. And obviously, this didn't just start this year. It has been a long time coming, and we are just now seeing the rotten fruit of what has been building for all this time. What is going to happen to Christ's church is nothing. Christ's church cannot be touched by sinful men who think that they know better than our Lord. His church will always stand. He promised us that the gates of hell would never prevail, but there is absolutely an ape of the church at work. And just because a priest is wearing the Roman collar does not mean that he holds the truth of the Catholic faith. And we have to be so careful with who we are listening to out there in Catholic media land and who we are surrounding ourselves with and what we are bringing into our homes. There is so much information out there and it is very easy to get just immersed in it and you can lose your way. I know I did for a very long time. I was trying to find out all this information when I should have been working on myself because that is the only thing I have control of in this world is the state of my soul. I am the person who puts my soul in jeopardy and in peril when I am in a state of mortal sin and I am the only one who can get it out. If our goal is to be well-informed, we need to be well-informed in the things that actually matter. Learning our faith as Catholics. For me, a lifelong cradle Catholic, it's only been the last several years, probably the last 10 plus years, where I've taken my faith seriously. I've gone through very long periods of desolation. I've shared about that in previous videos, but I have a foundation and that foundation was built crazy and as it may sound in the, in the Bible belt. My husband and I relocated our family several years ago, and it was when we found the traditional Latin mass that this faith that I always had, it was always in my heart, but I didn't know it. I didn't know what it meant to be Catholic. And because I didn't know my faith, I was making lots of horrible decisions and choices because I didn't know my faith. And believe me, I'm not trying to say I know it all because I have this YouTube channel or because I am crazy enough to come out here and talk about my faith. I don't know a lot about our faith, but at least now it's on my radar. And all of that started with the traditional Latin mass. And I'm so grateful for that, for the foundation of that. And I touched on it a little bit in my last video. I basically was saying how fortunate we are that the Lord in his goodness and mercy and kindness is allowing us to live in this time, this time of Francis, this time when the world just feels so upside down. And I am eternally grateful that just about six years ago, all the parts of my faith started to come together and this foundation was becoming stronger in me. So I would be able to endure what was coming, what is happening in Christ's church. We have no idea what's going to happen with this synod. There are so many people that are speculating, really good people like Father Murray, who thinks that the outcome of this synod is going to be a make-believe delusional religion that is just focused on self-worship. And we can see that that is a possibility. I listened to Dr. Taylor Marshall recently, and he talked about it, about how the insanity of thinking that there could ever be female priests or even deacons in Christ's church and why that can't happen. And if you happen to miss that video, I'll link it for you in the description box of my video. But when we learn these things, when we know the truth of the church, when we know what can and can't happen, we're not going to be so easily misled by even people that wear the Roman collar who want to tell us the things in Christ's church that are dogma, things that are have been tradition in the church for hundreds of years, it cannot change, no matter who happens to be temporarily holding the keys of St. Peter. Pope Francis, no matter what it is that he does, he cannot touch Christ's church. We have to remember that. Christ, this is his church, and Pope Francis is a placeholder. He is merely a guardian 
of what was handed down to him. He can't reinvent Christ's church. And I know that there's so many people who are afraid of what's happening. And, you know, we have to look to people like St. Padre Pio. What good does it do for us to be afraid? Christ is with us. We know how the story ends. And the only way that we can be separated from Christ is if we put our souls in mortal sin. If we choose the enemy over Christ. Pope Francis will go one day and we don't know who's coming behind him. But our faith does not hinge on Pope Francis. There isn't a man walking this planet today in 2023 that can pull you away from Christ, can take you out of his hand unless you allow it to happen. I'm so grateful that we made the pivot to tradition. And I, you know, I talked to my husband today, we went out to lunch and we were talking about how grateful we were that we have this foundation in tradition. So if we lose the Latin mass or the ability to celebrate the Latin mass in public in a diocesan parish, at least we have the foundation and we're not going to be misled. You know, when I was making horrible decisions in my life, and even my husband would say the same, it was because I didn't understand my faith. I didn't know what I could and couldn't do as a Catholic. And here I am in 2023, 50 years old, and I'm not going to be misled, regardless of who it is that's saying it. And I encourage you so deeply to find solid Catholic priests to listen to. Father Dave Nix is one of my favorites, Father Gerald Murray, Father Mark Goring, Father Mike Schmitz. There's lots of, and of course, it goes without saying, Father Ripperger, he is our absolute favorite. And one thing that is a thread with all these men, all these priests, is they aren't trying to water down the truth to try to pander to other people. And I feel like that is what the goal is of this synod is to pander to people, to make it make our church about people rather than worshiping our Lord Jesus Christ. We are so blessed, especially those of us who have been Catholic all our lives, where we don't know any different, that we that the Lord in his goodness allowed us to be in his church, to be members of his church, the one true church. And how long I took that for granted and didn't understand the magnitude of what that was, you know, that I was, it was a gift and a blessing to be Catholic and how differently my life would have been. But I also know that the Lord allowed every single thing, every single misstep, every action that I did, didn't do. He allowed it in his goodness because he loves me. And ultimately every mistake I've made in my life, somehow he will use it for good for me. So I'm so grateful to be Catholic, and I just wanted to encourage you to find good, reliable sources. There's lots of people who are coming against Father Altman for what he said. He made a video. I don't know if you've seen it. If you're a person who's going to be easily scandalized, maybe don't watch it. I don't know. But my husband and I did watch it, and he has a lot of really good points. I'm not at the place in my life that I'm going to come out here in a public forum and tell you my position on Father Altman and whether I think he's a sede, whether I think Pope Francis is or isn't the Pope. I've shared in previous videos my opinion on that, and that has not changed. I am not in a position to be able to say, no, he is or isn't or whatever. I think that he has done a lot of terrible things. Someone asked me once of who I think is the worst Pope, and I absolutely do think that it is Pope Francis. And I know that there was a lot of popes that did a lot of crazy things in the day, but I think that the long-term damage that he has done continues to do. Our grandchildren will be talking about it if this world is still here then. But I just wanted to encourage you, whatever happens in October, the crazy things that people are saying, you know, the blessing of same-sex unions or females being priests or any other crazy things that are happening, Find good traditional priests and listen to what they have to say. There's a lot of lay people out there that are giving their voice to what's happening. And I think that that's good. I think we have to be unafraid to share the truth of Christ and keeping our eyes fixed on him and realizing why we're Catholic and what our mission is as part of the church militant is to bring souls to him, not for our glory, but for his. And so if someone challenges you as a Catholic, be ready to have a defense. You know, there's so many people out there 
that are coming at us. You know, our church feels like it's just in this upheaval and chaos. The top of our church is Jesus Christ. And we have to rely on our faith, educating ourselves, reading good Catholic books. Pick up the Catechism of Trent, the Baltimore Catechism, the Dewey Rames Bible. Read things like books from Bishop Athanasius Schneider, Dr. Peter Kwasniewski. These are good, solid teachings that we can rely on as Catholics. If you missed my last video, I'll link it for you in the description box of this video. I still have part three of the series that I did with my husband. If you missed those videos, episodes one and two, I'll also link those for you. And I'm going to release episode three probably sometime this week. If not this week, it'll be next Saturday. And until next time, take care and God bless.